This week's episode of Still Untitled is made possible with support from Microsoft Surface, introducing the new Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. With its beautiful touchscreen, you'll experience stunning graphics with razor-sharp resolution, now available with a 13.5 or 15-inch screen. And with the latest processors, there's no project that the Surface Laptop can't handle. It's both light and powerful, so you can get more done on the go. Visit surface.com slash laptop3 to learn more. That's surface.com slash laptop three. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> it's blurring the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looked, that looked offensive. Hello. Welcome. Hello. People watching the, or uh, just listening to the audio, won't realize that we are not together in the same room. We're socially this uh, week because yeah, separated. Distancing. distancing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're practicing the good practice, uh, the recommended practice of social distancing. So we're all in our relative spaces, but connected to the magic of technology. How's everyone doing? Um, we are. I'm doing pretty, pretty, pretty okay. Uh, shit's weird, yo. I haven't left uh, the house in ten days. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? Really? We pulled my daughter from school last Monday, and we haven't. I mean, I went for a couple of walks, but I haven't seen other human <laughs> beings except my wife and my daughter since friday a week ago uh i'm gonna go tell you this is the i was prepared for this this is what i've been working on for 20 years like no human contact <laughs> let's do it i'm good to go um no it's it's hard this whole thing's hard um, obviously yeah. i'm i'm texting with my mom just for a second all right um yes so uh this is really peculiar isn't it um, it's strange times. Obviously, we have a lot of listeners, not just in the U.S., but across the globe, and every country is doing it a little differently. You know, the, uh, what's going on around the world is happening at different rates and different paces. Everyone's in a different stage. Uh, in the States, we can kind of talk about how things have changed over the past week since we talked on Monday a week ago. Uh, because last Monday, you know, while we were going to be cautious and we had a general sense of the dangers, it really escalated over, over the weekend. Um, and I, I want to state at the outset, um, while definitely I am politically outspoken on, on, uh, on my social channels, uh, I think that we're going to want to keep this to the podcast that it has been. Uh, you know, it's a very weird time right now. And, uh, you know, the question is what, everyone's asking is what can I do um, you know there are some tremendous resources out there and being built out there for people to figure out the ways in which they can stay safe and keep their families safe that this isn't the podcast to listen to for like all the current information um, no right you know it's like uh, 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 <sighs> somebody tweeted a couple of days ago and I found this quite stabilizing to hear it stated so nakedly no one on the planet knows what the next two months are going to be like. Like, what we're going through has never been gone through before. And how we go through it is, uh, is anybody's guess. I, you know, I'm looking at Italy, which is supposedly about 10 days ahead of us, and it sounds like things are going to get really, really rough. Um, I hope that everybody out there listening stopped going to bars. I saw the footage of people in bars and brooklyn and in new orleans and miami and it's making me crazy yeah it's it's i, I mean it, so i've been through a couple of hurricanes when i was a kid and it I, last week we were, gene and i were sitting here on like thursday night kind of we you know, like are, we're ready to go like we have we, our food and stuff is stocked we're we have enough toilet paper to make it through next week like everybody should um and you know we were sitting here and i was like there's nothing else to do there's literally nothing else to do. All I can do is sit here and wait for the start of this thing that's going to presumably be bad. And, and it, like, in a lot of ways, that was more frustrating. But then the, the thing that came on top of that for me that made my anxiety really bad, and I apologize in advance, but, uh, you know, if you're in a hurricane, there's always the feeling that you can get in the car and drive a few hundred miles. And, you know, what is a, a world-altering storm will be a bad thunderstorm, maybe a little bit of light flooding. And with this, there's nowhere you can go. Right. That's the thing that's, right. that's the scariest for me is that we're all here. I mean, the comforting side of that is that every, literally everyone 
the whole planet is in it together. But I mean, that's what the hope is. I mean, look, I, I've been talking about a shift in consciousness. I was watching a movie last night in which two characters kissed hello, like like the Mwah, yeah, Mwah, mm-hmm. and I was like, ah! yep, yep. Uh, uh, we, I was, we were, we were watching something. Ads popped up last night, and I was like, this ad is making me very uncomfortable. I don't have any idea why they were sharing French fries. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's also it's it's understandably understandably frustrating, like very frustrating for so many people. Like we can say the three of us feel like it sounds like we're pretty prepared and prepared people. Uh, I don't know when's the last time you guys went out to to buy supplies. I went out over the weekend and you could feel the tension. Like it was somewhat of a, a normal shopping experience going to a grocery store, but people are definitely eyeing each other. You know, there were aisles that were empty, even in, you know, a grocery store in San Francisco that gets resupplied. And that's, I mean, that's going to be, those those stores are not going to be completely empty, right? Like the resupplies are going to happen and there's no reason to panic. And I think there's a kind of a backlash against a kind of unreasonable panic, which isn't what we're advocating. And I think a lot of that is manifested in the frustration that people feel for like people in the service industry and all the, all the people are being affected by this. Yeah. Yeah. One of the restaurants my son works at, uh, sorry, the restaurant, one of my sons works at just closed for two weeks. Uh, and that's a tough order for a lot of restaurants. Closing for two weeks can be nearly fatal to many of them running on tight margins. It is a business most keenly affected by exactly this kind of slowdown. And plans, existing plans, right? Not just travel plans. You heard people, obviously, the big parks and theme parks have shut down, and there were photos on social media yesterday of the it's the last night before like Walt Disney World shutting down, and it was packed. And like, I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of those people, but in, in some regards, I can I can get it if they're already there. They've they're pot committed, right? It's so tough when you're right there to make the call to not go. And as you're going to get closer, we know people who have, you know, weddings or have other plans and they might not want to cancel now because they want to wait it out. But as they get closer to the day, then it gets even harder to even want to cancel those things. Well, our our friends uh, at XOXO, the festival of in Portland that we've all been to uh, just announced that they're canceling 2020. Like it's, it's, and that's in September. The, The thing that has become clear and and, the, and also, honestly, the reason like your early hoarding of toilet paper isn't effective is that when New York City shut down schools yesterday, they said, hey, you should be prepared. We're going to go until April 30th, but we should be prepared to not have kids go back to school until the fall at this point. Right. Like right. It, this is this could be the new normal for a period of not weeks, but months. And, and we need to be prepared for that. Um, um, that's you're Yeah, completely. Um, I, and I'm going to make a tangent here. Um, away from this bleakness just for a second to say, did any of you read the article about the toilet paper supply chain? No. It's fascinating. Oh, it's, to- it's totally fascinating. Toilet paper is one of these industries, Norm, that is has a completely flat delivery curve. They're, they sell the same amount of toilet paper no matter what. It's, there is no growth and there is no dip. And so if you attempted... To uh, if you attempted to make more toilet paper to fit a certain need, you would end up with a glut of it later, and it is something called like the whip effect within the supply chain. Oh yeah, yeah, whipple effect, I think. Right now, so, and, and oh, isn't it named after? I thought it was named after the um, Mr. The, from yeah, no, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, uh, at any rate, I, uh, uh, uh. uh Wait, what were they saying? Hold on. No, the point is my... that toilet paper is all made locally. Like you right, can't it's... ship toilet paper on crate containers because it doesn't make financial sense because it's too bulky and too light. Right. It's, it's a it's, high yeah. cost per volume. Uh, and so all the factories are placed strategically. So it's only a day's drive to wherever they go. And all the toilet paper factories have been running totally autonomously 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 and a quarter days a year for decades. Wow. Holy smokes. This whole thing is just going, and there's no way to, like, it's, it's doing what it's doing. And so there will be plenty of toilet paper. <laughs> That's ripe for science fiction writing. Look, Adam's in the pocket of big toilet paper over here. We got to watch <laughs> out. Um, I, I, big bidet. That, that panicky stuff, like, I saw that uh, Sean Bonner uh, posted a thing from Japan maybe two or three weeks ago now that was like, hey, 
there's no toilet paper in Japan right now. And and like I think if you would go back and trace that, like it's it's a known phenomenon. Though, the, the the thing that people like people who are in a panicking situation, they get to the store, the things that they were coming for aren't there, and they buy whatever the biggest thing is that makes them feel better about buying stuff. And toilet paper is nice and big and bulky, and it fits that bill. So there's there's some real weird psychology going on there uh, around that, which I didn't understand or know about before. Well, and I took Maggie out for a walk uh, two days ago. I went to I, I went to do some. I haven't been panic buying, but I have been slowly just making sure that we're buttoned down. Honestly, the thing, the most important ingredients to me are butter and salt. I could eat a cardboard <laughs> box if I had enough butter and salt. Uh, and so I, I stopped at the Andronicos over in the sunset. Um, and uh, while the lines to check, everyone had big full carts to check out. Um, everyone was very cordial. And <clears throat> I've been noticing in San Francisco in general a kind of a, a holy shit, we're in this together sort of vibe that I really appreciate. Um, the people out at the bars at night, notwithstanding. Um, and I didn't have to wait too long to check out. It was only about 20, 20 minutes in line before I was able to check out. So things aren't totally crazy here, thank goodness. I, I mean, I, and we have to be cognizant of the fact that the three of us are all married, relatively older, and we're okay, you know, Netflixing and and staying at home, and, right? And But I have like a housemate who's in his 20s, and it's tough. Right. He's like, I don't have you and your family and your dog. Right. And all my friends, some of them are going out and they're texting right now. And I'm like, don't, don't. And it's it's really rough for for those people who are their normal is a very much more social life than than ours. Well, it, well it's funny. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we've been talking about this on some of the discords I'm on a lot lately. And, and a lot of people are shifting their kind of social interactions online in that way. Whether it's like there were people just playing board games in in Discord on using the computer as the intermediary, using what tabletop simulator or something the other night, and I was like, this is like, this is this is a wonderful way to get some human interaction if you're home alone that isn't going to be high risk or potentially spread the because because remember the goal of this whole thing, the flattening the curve thing, the whole point is reduce the number of infection spread because we don't know when we're contagious, right? right so right. so going out. To get groceries is one thing. Going out to go hang out with your friends, play some, you know, FIFA or NBA 2K or whatever is maybe less less good. Um, I, I was going to say the whole thing reminds me. My my grandmother it was it was British, and was born in 1919, so she was a teenager at the start of World War II, and was in her early 20s when it when the war was over or, or late teens, early 20s, um, and. She grew up, she was in London during the... Wait, pledge. sorry, in the she, Second World War, got it. Second okay, World yeah. War, yeah, so she was born in 1919 and, and was, like, yeah, yeah. served in the, in the British Army and the whole thing during World War II. Lived in London, was stationed there, and she would tell, when I was in high school, we would talk a lot about what it was like to be there during the Blitz, because, you know, it was a pr pretty unprecedented time, the whole city was being bombed on the daily by the Germans, and they had made massive, massive sacrifices in, in the war effort. And and the thing that we like the stories were all over the place. Some of them were sad. Some of them were about a neighbor's house catching a bomb. Some of them were, you know, about the the Germans starting bombing early one day and some old codger on the bus saying, "Oh, Jerry's at it early today, eh?" Um, and like everybody on the bus having a good laugh. But the upshot is, you have to keep going and keep doing the things that you're that that you need to do so that when things are better, you're prepared to work to make them better. Right. Yeah, you're you're yeah. like, that's the that's the goal. Um, and I think that uh, like we're not fighting an opponent that we can defeat with guns or punching or you know whatever your favorite way of dealing with Nazis is. <laughs> but um, but but like that idea of we're all in it together and everybody's helping everybody out uh, is is important. Well, so um, my uh, two things that that reminded me of one is that my my grandmother who died a uh, in 2005, at the age of 105. Holy cow. Yeah, actually contracted and survived the Spanish flu in 1980. Wow. Wow. Yeah, right? Um, and the other one I wanted to tell you was, oh, right. So I'm talking to you on my new MacBook Pro. I finally upgraded to the four terabyte drive because my creative projects folder took over my computer and ate it alive. 
<laughs> it's a lot of. So, I, I've seen that folder. It's a lot of folder. It is a lot of folder. Um, and so I bought one of those um, privacy screen protectors that you yeah. can buy that magnetize onto your thing, and they've got this lovely little this lovely little nubbin for uh, putting over your camera to stop your camera from being visible. Right. Well, the laptop sat in a bag with the screen protector on it and the screen protector as thin as it is keeps the laptop open just the tiniest bit and the nubbin shattered the screen right where it was sitting oh my god no oh yeah so i got to <laughs> i was i was in la early last week i got to la and opened my laptop to see the screen just a, a wall of destruction oh, wow so i sent it into apple the screen got repaired it was they did it on warranty it was great uh wow and i went to the apple store uh friday afternoon to get it and that was a scene man so this is the apple store on union square right which has that wall of windows yeah, yeah. Stores. so the windows were closed <laughs> oh we'll talk about allergies in a second yeah can we the talk about your cough <laughs> uh, the windows were closed and the whole staff was behind the first row of tables which had stanchions between them so a security guard asked you what you were there for. And if you were there to pick something up, he let you in. It's like 10 feet from you and everybody. You stood there. You said your name. You held up your ID while they looked at it but didn't touch it. Then wow. they Then they brought you a bag. with. They brought me a bag with my laptop in and I pulled my laptop out of the bag. It was all like no contact transfer. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And listen, the rain here with the pollen bloom has been kicking my face's ass. The tree so pollen. Oh, oh. Of course, in the middle of the night last night, I'm like, oh, I've got the virus, I'm sure. Well, there, there's, there's, a thing, there's a thing with the tree pollen and the allergies and the fact that anxiety causes shortness of breath for me, at least, you know. <laughs> it's oh. been it's like you have a really good sneezing, coughing fit, and you're like, oh, God. Oh, God, this is it. This is it. This is the big one. No, it's fine. Everybody's, oh. everybody's, yeah. I mean, everybody's anxious is the thing, too. It's, it's not about the sneezes, either. No, no, sneezes <laughs> are clean. Yeah. You can sneeze all you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys watching anything? Do you guys, are you guys, ha have anything on your list? I'm, uh, burning, go ahead. I'm burning through the West Wing. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see, I I was looking at Netflix the other night and saw that Contagion and Outbreak were on the top ten, and I was like, oh, people, you're making a horrible mistake here. So I went to watch <laughs> Castlevania instead. That was much better. Uh, that Castlevania animated show is really all over the place, but really neat. It's a Warren Ellis written uh, written thing, and it, the animation's lovely, um, and it's it's much more comprehensible than The Witcher was. So, um, I, I'd say both Outbreak and Contagion, while they're they're big leaps in the science, uh, they're still really well made movies, and it's interesting to we did actually watch Contagion last week. Uh, it's funny to watch that with after you know being inundated with all the news because it's like you know more than the characters as just the observer. You're like, I know exactly what he's talking about when they're trying to explain to me the R not number for, you know, the virus and contagion. It's like, yeah. And it's actually comforting to some extent because it's all fiction. Well, thing two, one of the things we've been doing, as you said, Will, uh, in terms of socially getting together is we've been putting people on Skype or Zoom, actually, which we really like. Uh, and just putting them on the computer and chatting while we're like cooking. That's what, uh, yeah, we do that at meals sometimes with my parents and, and friends and, and stuff like that. What, and we were chatting last night with Thing Two, and he said he watched Contagion recently. And I didn't remember this, but he was like, the Gwyneth Paltrow's death scene is one of the most brutal things he'd ever seen, and he needed to turn off the movie at that point, which is mm. shocking from this kid who grew up on Tarantino. I, I So Gina and I watched that movie. We had the flu maybe around the time we met you, probably like 2012, 2011. And we were so sick that we just made a bed on the floor of the living room because it was closer to the bathroom than the bedroom. Yeah. And we were laying there. We, we were like, let's watch this movie about Gwyneth Paltrow movie about getting sick. And by about the th end of the second act, we were both pretty convinced that we were doomed and that we were the, the beginning of a viral pandemic. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the. It's the Kate Winslet cut. That that gets me every time. The the don't touch your face and then she starts coughing. Well, when she gives her jacket to someone, or yeah, it's it, it's a, yeah, it's. 
I'm not going to spoil it for people who haven't seen it, but yes. Uh, it's, it's the where, post. It's the after. It's the after effects of the thing that got me in that movie more than anything else. I think the mm. seeing the people who were the survivors dealing with the world as it as it ended up was was uh, challenging. So uh, yeah. Um, anyway. Before we continue on with the show, I want to let you know that support for Still Untitled comes this week from Microsoft Surface, introducing the new Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. With its beautiful touchscreen, you'll experience stunning graphics with razor-sharp resolution. Now available with a 13.5 or 15-inch screen. And with the latest processors, there's no project the Surface Laptop can't handle. It's both light and powerful, so you can get more done on the go. Visit surface.com slash laptop3 to learn more. That's surface.com slash laptop3. Now back to the show. I have watched, um, I've watched 1917 now <sighs> twice. Ooh. And I've been burning through all the behind-the-scenes footage I can find of it. I... I'm so blown away by that movie. Yes, I know I should go see it in a theater. I don't get out to the movies a lot, and I think it'll be a while. However, <laughs> uh, I've got a nice screen here in the house to watch it on. And I rarely watch a movie in which I know as I'm watching it that I'm going to watch it again and again and again because I just want to spend time in the space between these characters um, it's an amazing achievement, both technologically, but also narratively and performance wise. Holy cow. Have you, so you guys have seen yes. it. I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen it yet. I was waiting to see it in theaters, but I guess I'll just watch it at home now. Cause you know, Adam, I mean, we're not going to spoil the this plot for you, Will, but for Adam, when you were watching it, at least the first time, did you try to hold yourself back from noticing the cuts or could you not help, but try to pick them out in your brain? So. I can't help but try to pick them out. The The problem is, is unlike Rope, this is not a movie with four cuts. This is a movie with hundreds and hundreds of cuts in it. Yeah. They're just really, really beautifully done. Um, and I didn't realize this, but <clears throat> they really... So I read this long interview with the editor. And yeah. you heard about how the film was cut. It was cut as they shot. Yeah, they had to because you had to pick the scene. But not only that, they had to adjust the timing and the pacing of each scene so that it worked with everything they were doing up until then. There was no get out of jail free card for changing the pacing. So yeah. whole scenes were rewritten as they were going in order to uh, alter the pacing every yeah. single day. This is and so so they couldn't they like the studio couldn't come back at the end of the film and be like, we need to cut ten minutes from the middle of this movie because there's no place no. to do the well not not even that well. They couldn't usually, uh, you know, when, when you start the editing process, you go through your takes, right? And some of these shots had up to 50, 54 takes per shot. And those takes had to be reviewed and chosen before they shot the next shot to, for matching purposes. Because yeah. With every take, every, there were, a, I think one of the most common cuts in the film is a clever wipe. Yeah. Every, every single time something crosses most of the frame, it's a wipe. Yeah, and that allowed them to really break this down into. And there are some takes that are five, four, and five minutes long, but they're. I think they're in the minority. Well, that, that's the how they did it in Birdman too, right? Like it was a lot of like following, following the walk, and then the camera would cut left to go into a different room, and it would cut on that on that door jam or whatever. Except that for Birdman, they use the passage of time differently. Like remember in Birdman, they would pan the camera outside a window and then have like a time lapse of the sun. And so it wasn't this continuous quote unquote, you know, two hours, or two and a half hours. And there's only one of that here. Uh, I don't want to say exactly how they do it, uh, but they didn't use computer controlled camera systems. They didn't, they weren't able to say match, you know, yeah, it wasn't like match this shot with this shot. Yeah. Uh, the handheld stabilizers. Um, and Norm to that end, that was one of the things I found the most astounding about the narrative of 1917 is in its passage of time because while the film is in a single shot there is one cut that you know about that that occurs um the film really does plasticize time as you move through the narrative and there's a couple of scenes in which he is in transit and even though the in transit might in the film only be seven or eight minutes of footage by the time he gets off his transit, you feel like it's been a couple of hours. There's yeah. a way in which Mendy's 
plays with the oscillation of excitement and boredom that I, this is something I'm going to, I'm keeping watching to kind of understand because there's a mastery of the, of the beats of narrative in this film that's illuminating stuff I didn't know before about storytelling. And it's like the kind of time distortion effects, you know, the, the watching the, te- the, the, the kettle, right? There are moments that intentionally the, the, the character is, you know, for all intents and purposes, watching water boil and time slows down for him. But that's when he gets his breath because it is continuous. And the exhaustion that you feel as a viewer is supposed to be there because it's amplified in like the exhaustion he's feeling throughout that day. And the, wow. the performances of the two lead actors, as yeah. um, you know, you always it's they, they were really specific. I read that they wanted to cast people the unknowns, people you didn't know because you wanted to feel fresh about it. Um, and they're <clears throat> it, it's super remarkable. The achievement is is gobsmacking. And I'll watch this. I literally, I'll probably watch it again this afternoon. <laughs> it's so good. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to give that a watch. Uh, I watched the, you know, the people who make the Toys That Made Us documentaries on Netflix did a, mo- a series of four on the movies that made us. Right. Yeah. I think the yes. four movies are are um, Ghostbusters, Dirty Die Hard, Dirty Dancing, and I don't remember what the fourth one is. Ghostbusters. Go, go, no, I got that one. There's Ghostbusters, Dirty Dancing, Die Hard, and something else. A- anyway, I oh, watched Home the, Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. Oh, yeah, right. I watched the Dirty Dancing episode last night, and. Okay. Holy cow, what an amazing, like, I I already love the movie, right? We all love, the, everybody loves the movie. You can't not love the movie. Yeah. Um, but, I, like, I didn't know, having seen that as a teenager when I didn't know or give a shit about abortion, really, um, knowing how they tied, how the writer, like, was like, hey, this is a movie about, you know, dancing and growing up and coming of age and also, like, this specific period of time, Um it, it was fascinating hearing the the story of how they managed to keep that keep the message in the movie without losing the without losing that uh, through the whole thing. It's it's it, it, it was fascinating hearing about Patrick Swayze constantly injuring himself, constantly hurting himself, oh, dancing. Brutal. Uh, and but I also really appreciated in the series. I mean, the narration gets a little um, behind the music at times. <clears throat> However, I really liked how. Uh, they include a lot of the negative stuff that happened on each of these films. Like they dish some real dirt on some of the actors. And even though you have very few A-list actors showing up in any of those, uh, uh, any of the programs, you still feel like you didn't just get the studio's version of how it was to shoot a movie. And I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Um, I thought it was fascinating. I've, I've watched that one, the Die Hard one, and the Ghostbusters one. I have to watch the Home Alone one still. But uh, the, the Ghostbusters one is very funny when they start talking about how, yeah, you never had any idea when Bill was going to show up on set. <laughs> <laughs> Could be anybody's guess. Uh, Where are you in West Wing, Adam, if you're burning through that? Uh, we are in the middle of season four, post okay. the re-election. Um, okay. And it, tur- it turns out this is a season that I it turns out that I watched up to the end of season three and then stopped because this oh, wow. is all brand new. I all the Josh Molina stuff I had never seen before. <laughs> he's a controversial character, especially in my home. I oh really? I, he's what? He's he's controversial and and you know he uh, for people who don't know right he he was brought in to replace Rob Lowe, Sam Norman Seaborn, and. And so uh, Josh Molina is the actor. Will Bailey is the character. Uh, and he, the way he's brought in, he's really brought in as one of them. He's like, actually, you're, you're meant to really love him because he's like, he's very op- uh, idealistic. He's competent. He's, he writes, he's brilliant. He, 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 he's supposed to share all these same qualities. And the character really goes downhill. Uh, they have to make him a character that I don't think fans wanted uh, by the end of the show. So I'm curious, I'm curious to see what you think. Josh Molina on Twitter, he's one who also co-hosts the um, West Wing Weekly, right? And he's, you know, his Twitter profile is, you know, I ruined West Wing. The guy who ruined West Wing. Yeah. I, I'm a huge Josh Molina fan because my first Aaron Sorkin show is Sports Night. We've talked oh about how God. amazing that show is. Yeah. And how amazing he is on it. Um, look, you know, the West Wing is just bomb- at the time that I need balm, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's a vision it, of a it's a vision of the world <clears throat> that is consistent and lovely, even if it's fictional. If you have time, catch up to when they get to season 
six, end of season six ish, because that's the primaries for the next election. And to watch that in relative real time with what's going on in the primaries here is is very surreal. Oh wow! Okay, all right. Yeah, um, uh, we did we did that for the last election, and and uh, for whatever reason, stopped watching. Uh... <laughs> Stopped watching right after the election. I don't know what changed. It was uh, it, it didn't work last time. Is all I'm oh, saying. I did watch a movie the other night. I was uh, two things happened. I was scrolling through stuff and I discovered that there's a Steven Stodderberg film that I didn't know about. What the Gina, the Gina Carano one called? Oh, Haywire. Yeah, Haywire. Yeah. New or old? It's old. No, 2011 with like Michael oh. Douglas and Channing Tatum and like all of these people in it. Yeah, never heard of it. it. Has eighty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes, so I'm going to watch that. Have you watched <laughs> Knives Out yet? I I, I have watched most of it. God damn it! <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, it's super enjoyable. For some reason, we got to like twenty minutes from the end, and we we paused, and that was like two days ago. We haven't gotten around to finishing it. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes the Logan Lucky segue. Sorry, I was going to ask you which which is your favorite terrible accent from uh, Daniel Craig. I, actually, to be fair, I think Daniel Craig is for a for a performance that is so right on the edge of heavy duty scenery chewing. I feel like he he holds it back just enough. I think it's oh, a terrific performance. I think it's I th- I love it. I think it's completely <laughs> intentional. Like I think I think the 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 epitome of the foghorn leghorn southern accent that he does in that movie is is not an accident. Like I like clearly yeah yeah. Anyway, I I thought it was great. I found it more believable than his accent in Logan Lucky. I mm. like the Logan Lucky one a lot because it is growing up in that part of the country. It is laughably bad, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Logan Lucky is terrific. That yeah. that might be one we yeah. watch because uh, my wife haven't hasn't seen it. Oh it, yeah, it's a delight. The way that all comes together, that 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 one comes together. It, it's it's like a, I I pitch that as an Ocean's Ocean's <laughs> Eleven for the for the you know mountain people. So we've mentioned uh, Contagion, and now we've mentioned Logan Lucky, and this is a perfect segue for me to talk about the fact that I have this. Um, I love Jennifer Ely. She plays one of the researchers in Contagion. She's most famous or uh, has been famous for playing um, the incredible uh, uh, lead in the BBC six-hour version of Pride and Prejudice, um, Mm. which if you haven't watched the original Pride and Prejudice with Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy, that is a fantastic thing to watch right now. It is. I've watched it two or three times all the way through. It's a magnificent uh, 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 adaptation. but uh, Logan Lucky has Catherine Waterston in it, who was the star of Alien Covenant uh, and a bunch of other wonderful stuff. And she and Jennifer Ely sort of hold this similar place in my brain of like this very smart, awesome female a- character actors who just are terrific in everything people put them in. They're both like young Meryl Streep's. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I Millions. saw that. Um, we watched, uh, we've been watching Shit's Creek. Just as a kind of comfort food thing to dip into when when you're when when it's the end of the day and you don't want to think anymore, yeah. um, it, it is amazing how every episode of that we're midway through the second season. Every episode of that is better than the ones that came before, and and they're as they discover who those characters. It's really fun to watch them. These people who've been doing this together for such a long time figure out what the who the characters are and and put them together. And e- Eugene Levy is just so guileless and horrific in that show it's it's very there's a scene early on when when they ask him to do a a, a eulogy um he, they asked me to be a pallbearer for somebody who died in town that he doesn't know and he's just sitting there and you immediately see the wheels turning how can i get out of this how can i get out of this how can i get out? i have a bad back and then a day later they come back and like well will you do the eulogy instead it's like i don't really <laughs> know this person at all <laughs> Um, it's, it is, it is absolutely brilliant and such a treat. If you, if you grew up watching Christopher Guest movies, it's, it's, it's wonderful that there's so much Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara and all those folks. Those guys are such, can you imagine? I like every time I watch them go, I think about what a, what an unbelievable lucky pleasure it would be to watch them go on set and watch them workshop 
these scenes and these characters with each other. Um, I, I have you ever seen on Waiting for Guffman? There's some unbelievable behind the scenes material. Oh no, I have the DVD in the garage though. I'll go dig it out. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, so um, there is in the behind the scenes material. There is a uh, 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 Oh my God! The actress from Party Girl, from the New Girl? No, not, uh, not Parker uh, Posey. Parker Posey. Excuse me. Yes, Parker Posey. Yes, the the, the right. I got one. Thank you. Finally, <laughs> Parker Posey filmed her own audition for Waiting for Guffman in character. <laughs> so wow. she plays out this whole scene that her character has written. That is just it's kind it's mind blowing it's and it's amazing to watch um, uh, it's totally incredible and you feel you, watching the behind the scenes material on Guffman is the closest I've gotten to feeling like I'm on set because you do get to watch these guys talking about the experience of putting the film together and putting these characters together. Oh, that sounds fabulous. Sorry about that. I had a quick phone call. No worries. Uh, we're actually going to wrap it up, but obviously we're watching a lot of stuff. We'd love to know what people are doing to help pass the time. If you are, you know, self-isolating, if you have to work from home, uh, this is going to be the new normal for for a little bit. I mean, especially you know for this podcast for sure. So we'll we'll try to keep on doing this uh, just to again have some semblance of normalcy. Uh, and, and, and yep, we got time on our hands. We'll be watching a lot of stuff. We'd love to get your recommendations and we'll be sharing kind of like our own experiences getting through this as well. Well, and, uh, you know, tested, it's going to be a no touch, no contact workplace for at least the next month. So we'll be shooting videos in a wholly brand new set of ways. I think Yeah, figure that out this week. And, uh, yeah. Um, um, I, I've been doing daily streams, uh, during the daytime so that people yeah. have a place to hang out and chat and, uh, some days we do talk about COVID stuff. Some days we do no talking about COVID stuff, depending on whether people want to have breaks. Uh, but you can find them at twitch.tv slash not that Will Smith. Awesome. And yeah, stay stay connected to people. You know, I, I think p things like this, things like what we're doing help. It gives a sense that you're not alone. And it helps us too. Honestly, it's good to see you guys, even if we can't be in the same room. Yeah. Um, and we'll hopefully be back next time. But uh yeah, we'll, we'll have a we'll be back <laughs> next time. We'll keep this going. This will still be a place you can visit. Yeah. All right. Uh, wash your hands, right. guys. Yeah, wash your hands. Do. Don't touch I'm your gonna face. wash my hands right now. That just felt dirty. I know. <laughs> all right. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>